Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol King. Uh, I'm a small business owner here in North Lake Charles, the last Christian preschool. And uh, we employ 12 people, including myself. The reason why I'm saying that is because there are other business owners here also. But what I want to speak on is that I asked Mayor, Mayor Rhodes one time when he was at MLK at a function. And a car didn't go on outside to his car. And I asked him, I said, Mayor, what do you see when you drive from South Bay Charles to North Bay Charles? And he immediately got defensive. What do you mean, what do I see? So it's not a nice car on Mayor Rhodes that I know of. But anyway, I started to ask him again, what do you see? Because it's like, when you come from South Lake Charles to North Lake Charles, if you close your eyes for a minute, you think you're in a whole different city. <laughs> and that should not be. And we know that. We all know the problem, we know the ditches, the drainage, all of this stuff. So my proposal would be that every year, there should be a percentage of our tax money to be invested in North Lake Charles infrastructure. a special year, one there. I mean, we should not drive to North Lake Charles and not see infrastructure being either developed or repaired. So it can come up to the standards of the rest of the city. I'm not hating on anybody. It's beautiful over there. And it's beautiful here. It's just a different kind of beauty. But we talk about businesses, of which I am an owner. What business wants to move into a community where the streets are, the, the, the asphalt is so worn out, the ditches are so huge, the mosquitoes are so busy, until, you know, it's, it's discouraging. Another thing, we have to stop the negative publicity that we see most of the time on the news. In the now, I'm not saying that things don't happen, but it happens in every city, in every neighborhood. But it's, it just seems like it's just magnified when it's in North Lake Charles. We have to stop that. Okay, secondly, I am disappointed that I don't see every city council in here tonight. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. I know Rodney Ian was raised in Booker T. Washington Forest. I know the birth of was raised in North Lake Charles. Okay, where are they? I mean, I appreciate you people being here, you know, but you wasn't raised on this side of town, most of you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, as a, as a taxpayer, as a taxpayer in this city, all of us, we should see ongoing construction here in North Bay Jobs. And it is almost done. Almost done. Uh, monopolizing the supermarket industry. Right? We gotta put a stop to it. We've got $100,000 people. How many super Walmarts and little big Walmarts do we need? It's really, I mean, it's destroying the mom and pop stores. Yes, that's right. You know, you have a super Walmart and four blocks from it, you have a mini mall of Walmart. I mean, who's coming out of Walmart City? I mean, you know, we gotta put a stop to it. If we, if, we, if we really care about each other, okay, now if you just about the money and just line your pockets, okay, then I'm not talking to you, all right? Uh, also, a reduction in the red team that one has to go through just to open a small business. It has to be simplified, okay? It has to be simplified. And we need tax breaks also, just like you get the plants, just like you get the film industry. We need tax incentives, we need incentives to open that business. I mean, it, yeah, Golf Lake Charles, I mean, it, everybody can benefit from that, okay? We need tax breaks, we need incentives so we can open these businesses. Um, you know, I think I'm just about done. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, again, I want to say that I know everybody here is concerned about this community. Now, we're all concerned about the whole city because we are free to go everywhere we want to go. 
But this is where we live. Yes. This is where we live. And, Mayor, if you are as concerned as you appear to be, we cannot give the illusion of equality. Okay? Can't have the illusion. We gotta have the real deal. We gotta have the answer. Give out the mayor's hotline number, please, ma'am. I, <laughs> I, I think it's on my phone. Rodney Lavelle, 
to my city. So this is my complaint. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Teresa Richard, and I'm here for a problem that is in my community. I live on the corner of Prater and Molden, and the police jury, we thank them very much. They built us two beautiful buildings for the community. But the problem is, next to the building is an old, dilapidated baker shop. My city council know about it. We tried as much as we can. And I'm not faulting you, Maria, because you're just coming in. <laughs> but please send somebody. And I don't know who was the inspector. That's all right. But we're going to take care of business today. Amen. In, in the back of that baker shop, there's bushes maybe from that back wall to where you sit. If I had a business in Lafayette, they would have a long time seized my business. So why should we and Nick Charles have to live that way? My grandson is artistic, but high, high function. Being the dad program, he knew everything. Today he ran. Granny, come see. I said, what? He was in the backyard. Look in the bushes. And when I got there, there were four of them shooting up. My grandson should have the right as any individual to walk in my yard. And that is a hazard of flower, shadow of flower, policemen, citizens, because when they only make funny stuff, they're subject to do anything. <laughs> so I say to my policemen, not all the policemen, all of us. So please get somebody to do something about it. Ms. Morris know about it. We tried, but today was the last straw. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, amen. Yeah, man. You want to fire? Oh, you brought it. Anyone speak? I was wondering if, uh, if that uh, Blackwell would be addressed. We said that at the meeting we had for the subdivision that this would be the place to bring it up. Uh, Blackwell is the only street in and the only street out of the new subdivision. And it, it Blackwell from 171 to the new subdivision is skinny. And it got big ditches on each side. <laughs> and when people put out the trash can, they got to put the trash can out in the street because of the big ditches. And they have jumped in front of my car a couple of times. And, and, and it needs to be addressed. It's going to, it's going to be increased traffic, increased people, because that's the only way in and the only way out of that subdivision. That street needs to be wide and those ditches closed. Uh, Dr. Lake Charles is one of the oldest parts of Lake Charles. We should not be talking about closing ditches in North Lake Charles that's anymore. Right. That should have been for way done. That's yes. right. Yes. 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 Yes.
lived in Lake Charles for 71 years. I spent a lot of time in North Lake Charles. When I was growing up, we moved, and now I'm back in this area again. So I agree with everything that everyone has pointed out so far. We, we should have been, North Lake Charles really should have been declared a historic preservation area. So old and we have so much history back here. And a lot of our history is gone. The thing that I'm most concerned about is public transportation. I don't know if this has been addressed or being addressed or what, but everywhere you go, you see there are hire signs. And I've asked different folks, you know, why is the, what's the major problem in when you hire somebody, are you, are they, are you firing? They said, their major problem is transportation. That a lot of the people who are working at minimum wage, they cannot pay for everything at minimum wage. So having a, adding a car note, that's just almost out of the picture for some of the people in our area. And the thing that I would like to see is maybe we can have more buses, maybe longer hours or something. Especially those, there are a lot of people who work in the nursing home industry. There are a lot who work in the retail industry, fast food industry, and several of our people work at the two casinos, the Burge and go to another. Maybe we could set aside some buses that can meet, like in other cities, park and go. They can meet in that area. Now, because some people can have, they have people drop them off to work, then they have no way home. Mm -hmm. Or they have someone pick them up when they uh, leave work, but they don't have any way to get to work. So, you know, you can't raise your children and you have, to, you have problems. So I would like to see us look into something that would help these people. And I would like to see something that maybe we could coordinate. I know there are different shifts at all these different uh, businesses. Maybe the businesses or someone who's a lady from the city can work with these businesses and coordinate what time that they can set up shifts where you have the most people riding the uh, buses and the most people getting home. So that was my main concern because uh, I know a lot of people that work with some of the nonprofits have said when people come in for help, they ask them, well, why aren't you working anymore? Transportation is my major problem. And we can't, and they can't afford to purchase a, a, a vehicle on, on the salary that they're making. And that is my major concern.
forcing us to either back up or go through the old fashions parking lot. And with the addition of the donut place, <coughs> it causes a bottleneck because we're now blocking uh, flow into Middle of Fashion's parking lot if we are parked at the light two or three cars. So I know that on Ryan and 18th Street, they have a dual light or a slave light or whatever you call it that makes the traffic stop before the street access. I would like one of those installed for us. <coughs> and I'm thinking that you can put one of the pole lights so that the traffic on 171, when, when the light turns red in front of look fashion, that light turns red before our street, allowing us to go out, um, even if it's a little bit delayed from that first light as far as when the lights turn green. But that will allow us to get in and out. It will also free up his parking lot for his own customers to come in and out. And I think it would be a good thing for my area. Thank you. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Somebody asked earlier about the number for the mayor's action line. It's 491-1346. And any and all complaints, questions, comments, concerns can be called into that number. 491-1346. Fitzgerald Bravo. Uh, one question. Can, uh, can I ask where... Do your board members live? Do, they, do any of your board members live in North Lake Charles? No. Okay. I live on North Lake Street. I live right off the interstate. So I know all the problems we got going on. Okay. Uh, a lot of this falls under economic development. Uh, that uh, all the questions that were asked. Um, how will your office help North Lake Charles with economically development or in helping North Lake Charles Redevelopment Authority that we do have here. Will there be any resources that the city will uh, give the authority to help ourselves in North Lake Charles? Um, that's one question. Um, the other thing, the um, of course, I live on Hagen Street uh, in North Lake Charles, and it's the same thing, ditches. Uh, we've been having ditches, like everybody said, for years and years, which caused a problem. So uh, at one time, we had money slated for to uh, cover the ditches, and nothing ever happened to that. Um, money went away, or we got uh, that allocated somewhere else. Um, so that, that's uh, another thing. But if you guys would earmark uh, monies to help North Lake Charles Redevelopment Authorities. I think that they can actually help us as well. Because when you say the word authority, it means to have, uh, give orders or to, to, to help. But the authority that we have now doesn't have the money really to help us help you. So um, please address that. Doris Reza. Thank you. Thank you. 
that we must all reckon at the national office recognizing us as a chapter. So I was about to come out and address you without an agenda, or without something to say to you that would be positive and be recognized by the national office. With this said, uh, the NAACP is to ensure the economic, social, political rights of everybody. We have right now, we have seven committees already in place with chairpersons to address these issues that we're talking about tonight. We would like to be proactive. We don't, we don't want to find ourselves in the position that Ben Bush found ourselves in a few months ago. We would like to see at the table. Can we would like to see at the table so we can discuss and be familiar with what's going on so our political people can be familiar with us and then we can work as a unit to get these things done. So with these chairs persons in mind, you will know who to go to to get this. We will have a website up pretty soon with each chair person. So when we go in, we have the address thing. Not only do we want to address problems, we want to recommend solutions to those problems. Even somebody to say what's a, what a problem is. But then again, we want to say, hey, here's what we can do to address these problems. Lake Charles is a great first place. We have a diversity of people here in this area. We can go. We're going to have problems. They're going to come. And at this time, we would like to be proactive rather than reactive. Thank you. All right. Find 
some kind of way to unite and come up with monies to open up some businesses. We used to be his business owners in the day. Boulevard was all nothing but black business owners. We are some of the best cooks in the world. There's nobody can cook like black people. <laughs>
it, you know what I'm saying? Like this over here is really bad. I am a truck driver also. In every state in the United States, Canada and Mexico, I have never seen it where you have to go to a city park. And if you want to fish, you got to wait on a golf cart that's not in the And I'm telling you, I have a lot of different that can divide this whole thing. And if I know Democrat or Republican, That's right. you already got it going on. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say to you? But I would feel so much better if I could take my grandma or who she ain't here no more than I'm thinking. <laughs> what I'm saying is my grandchildren out there and teach them how to fish. We don't even have no way to fish. But this place has bass, perch. You know, so open this up. Don't throw it up. Don't try to dress up to suck somebody else. Either. You know what I'm saying? We all want to live right. This man out there for the man. Thank y'all. east and west, you got to stop to let that car by. Now you can walk if you don't be careful. So I would like something done to that road on Frickson Rider Road, where I stay right on the end, because these people have spoke quite well. And it's so true what they're saying. God bless each of you, and I'm not going to hold up your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wendy Robinson. Oh, right here. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, I, I, my name is Wendy Robinson, and I live in the community. I've been in this community most of my life. Uh, I look around the room, and I'm very glad to see all the people here. Yes, yes. But I'm very disappointed because we have a lot of wisdom in the room, but when it comes to individuals, I guess my daughter, other than your kids, is probably between the ages of 20 and 30 or 40. I don't see that many of us in here. And, and I do understand all the information. I mean, all everything that everybody said in here, the elderly that's in here, they've been property owners here for a long time. And we shouldn't have to deal with ditches. I mean, that should have been, I mean, when I was growing up, we had ditches. And we shouldn't have ditches anymore. I'm 50 three years old, and we shouldn't have ditches in the door. Um, buses, Ms. Betty said, the buses. Most of our young people, if they don't have a vehicle, they can't get across town if they work at the mall. Or if they at work at one of the malls. You don't have nursing homes on this side of town. You don't have shopping centers. You don't have, the places on this side of town are owned by families. Uh, and, and their families are working there. They're not hiring our kids to work here. We got to drive south of Broad Street to get jobs around here if you're going to get them. And if you do have one here, it's great. So buses don't need to cut off at 5 o'clock. You know, and that really doesn't make a sense for a city this size for buses to cut off and stop running at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. You know, these kids, if they're going to McNeese, then they're getting out of class. If they're working on that side of town, then they can't get back home. Yeah. That's that makes no sense whatsoever. And as far as economic development between Broad Street and English Bayou here, there's nothing. I like coffee. There's about five Starbucks south of Prairie Lake Road. I, I drink Starbucks. I do. You know, I think a lot of other people on this side of town would like to enjoy a cup of coffee. And I know we got some coffee shops here, but we don't have a variety. And that's why. And why has it taken this long to even, you know, it, it just doesn't make much sense to me. I have a 19-year-old and an 18-year-old. Both my kids are going to school out of the city. Do I encourage them to come back here once they get their four-year degree? Why? For what? 
For what? My family has always lived in this area of town, and I'm not moving. And I don't want to move. I want to raise, I raised my kids here. I want to continue raising my kids here. You are far, father to be. You've lived here all your life. And in your area of town, it's probably really nice. It's always been nice. But here, I shouldn't have, I still shouldn't have to, when I'm dropping one of my kids' friends home, I still shouldn't have to dodge a ditch. That's ridiculous. I really think, and, I, I don't, and the thing about all the people that's on your board here, that's great. Some of these people have been in poor with the city for years, and they've heard these same things over for years. Yes. It's time yes. for us to yes. stop. Yes. 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 Willie Mount, 
to do an international music and cultural festival here, which we started in 1998. I'm older now, it's gone on into other hands. But now I do the International Family Day in the Park. That was a blessing that was given to me by God in the middle of the night. I woke up, he said, Family Day in the Park, and I'm going like, what in the world is that? And he said, it's an opportunity for people in different cities and countries to come together because the world is so separated. Families are separated. Children are separated. Everybody is going their own way and doing everything but the right thing. He said, I want an opportunity. I'm giving an opportunity for people to come together in different places and come together as family, as, as community. So we started that here at Ray Charles. I talked to Mayor Randy Roach. I burned his ears up. Right now we do the Family Day in the Park once a year in November. We usually at Lock Park groups, sometimes we move around and we do free camp, gumbo for the people, we have entertainment. I'm into, interested in economic impact in the city. Around the waterfront, it is so beautiful. When I go to other places, it's so many people enjoying this. But here, sometimes when, when our, our people would go around there, they would arrest them and put them away because they said, you know, you disturb the people. You have to stop that. You're a young man, you're a young man. And I'm looking for you to make some things happen. Not just with the streets, because it's ridiculous how beautiful it is over there. And this area of town is, is the last thing on the totem pole. Uh, and why is that? That's not right. We have a beautiful city. Look at here. All of this property they done tore down and whatever have you. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful, this whole city. And you know, usually in other states, North, the, the south side of town is where all the black folks live. But in Lake Charles, North Lake Charles, is where the, the majority of us live. You know, we don't live on the south side. We live on the north side. And I love on the north side. <laughs> so I just like to ask you there, you know, like even Boulevard, do you know that's a, a access in the city and out? We should have food stops, entertainment, because that was where we used to sit outside on Boulevard the nights that we didn't want to go out to look like, you know, we're going out every night. So we would sit in our cars and watch the people enjoy entertainment. We had a great city, great entertainment for us. And I want to see it grow. I want everybody to come out in the International Family Day of the Park. We bring together politicians when they run. Because I want them to come out here and talk to the people. We have people that have businesses to come out and sit down and talk to people. Because a lot of people don't know where to go to do what. And it's information that, be, that is free to the public. And at the end of the day, what we did is entertainment, singing, partying, having fun, gospel, exercise, whatever we do. Then we have a free gumbo. A free gumbo, okay? okay. That's just the part that I'm doing. And I would like to challenge everybody. And I want us to stop talking about all of this, the black and the white. I mean, it's a reality. But, you know, it's God's time now. We're living in the last days. We gotta get this together. You know what I'm saying? So, look for me more. As long as I'm here, I'm gonna do my part. God bless.